Hi, my name is Arthur Kowalczyk, and today I'm going to be presenting about cars from around the world. So basically, I'm going to take a look at the different car brands and manufacturers that exist around the world that you might not be too familiar with or might not even know about. So first, I'm going to start by talking about car companies. So most brands you see are actually part of larger companies. For example, um, Chevrolet, GMC, and Cadillac are all owned by GM. And these brands represent the different types or tiers of vehicles that the company manufactures. So for example, a Chevrolet will be a base GM car, while a GMC will be a little bit nicer, and then Cadillac will be the luxury version. And these brands will often share chassis um, with each other and components in order to keep costs down. Um, the first country I'm going to talk about is uh, Japan and I'm actually not going to talk too much about the brands just because they're uh, pretty prevalent, uh, pre prevalent in the United States so I'm just going to talk about the car culture in Japan. Um, Japan is known for producing some of the best uh, sports cars and um, street racing and modifying cars became very popular in Japan as well as drifting. Um, drifting is a form of driving where instead of um, driving the car as you would normally, you actually try to slide the car around. So it's a very fun way to drive and a very kind of like um, show offy way of driving. And it's become very popular. Um, Japanese car culture can be uh, seen in TV shows such as Initial D and movies such as uh, The Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. And these uh, movies and shows kind of helped uh, bring. Uh, Japanese car culture to the United States and made Japanese sports cars very um, popular with car enthusiasts in the United States. Unfortunately for the Japanese, the government has implemented um, stricter regulations in the last few years, making it harder to modify your cars, and they've cracked down on a lot of um, street racing for safety reasons. So um, the car culture in Japan has died down, died down a lot, and it's not as popular as it used to be. Um, Japan also produces K-cars and microvans, which are the smallest cars uh, allowed on Japanese highways. And they're pretty interesting because of how tiny they are, and they're kind of quirky. Next country I'm going to talk about is Italy. So the major um, car manufacturer in Italy is Fiat Chrysler, and they own Fiat, Barth, Alfa Romeo, Lancia, and Maserati. Fiat and Alfa Romeo have recently come back to the United States um, in like the last decade, but unfortunately they've had a lot of issues with the reliability. For example, the Fiat 500 was one of the most unreliable cars in the United States a few years ago, and then more recently the Alfa Romeo uh, Giulia is considered one of the most unreliable. Um, Italy also has Pagani, which um, produces extreme hypercars. Uh, and these cars uh, compete with Ferraris and Lamborghinis. And Italian cars are often considered some of the best looking. Um, if you look up the best looking cars in the world, at least half of them will be Italian. Um, Italians are just known for their style and their cars reflect that. The next country I'm going to talk about is the United Kingdom. So the United Kingdom used to have a lot of different car manufacturers, but unfortunately a lot of them went bankrupt or disappeared otherwise. Um, some of the ones that still exist are Lotus, uh, which is owned by Geely, and is known for producing very um, good handling sports cars. There's Vauxhall, which is essentially um, Opel cars. Opel is a German brand that is owned by PSA Group, so they just kind of rebadged them. Um, there's MG, which is now owned by a Chinese SAIC Motor Group. And then there's Caterham and Art Ariel. Both of these companies produce open-air track day cars, so they're not really cars you would use every day. Instead, they're used for um, driving around on racetracks and having fun. British cars are also known for being very stylish. For example, the Austin Martin DB5 is known as James Bond car. James Bond's car and, and is considered one of the best looking ever made. And um, Brit British cars are also known for reliability issues. Um, for example, uh, a few years ago, Range Rovers were known for 
breaking down extremely often to the point where they would break down while they were being reviewed. Just kind of funny. And now we're going to talk about France. So France actually produces a lot of different cars. Um, the major brands are Renault, which owns itself. And there's also Citroen, Peugeot, and DS, which are all part of PSA Group. Um, Citroen produces a lot of um, kind of like normal cars, like sedans, um, hatchbacks, and stuff like that, as well as uh, Citroen, Peugeot, and DS. They all do the same thing. Um, Renault is notable because they have their own Formula One team that's been re uh, re pretty successful. And then Citroen has had a lot of um, technological innovations over the years, such as hydropneumatic self-leveling suspension. And they also created the first mass-produced car with disc brakes. And there's also Bugatti, which is owned by Volkswagen. But they've produced some of the fastest cars in the world, such as the Bugatti Veyron, and then more recently, the Bugatti Chiron. Uh, Russia has also produced a lot of cars that uh, most people don't know about. Um, two of the major manufacturers are Avtovaz, which is owned by Renault, and then Uaz. So Avtovaz is known for producing uh, Lada Rivas, which are basically your basic communist car. Um, they're not very well made, but they're cheap and they're very simple, so they're very easy to fix and maintain. And they're actually the third best-selling automobile platform in the world, and one of the longest-running platforms. They've been produced from 1979 and still produced in, and are still produced in Egypt. Uh, UAS is known for producing SUVs, trucks, buses, and military vehicles. And then you have the Arus Senat, which is the presidential vehicle of Russia, which is what uh, Putin drives around in. And they're basically just known for being very simple and cheap and often um, are based off of designs of other car manufacturers. Um, the Czech Republic, Spain, and Romania all also have their own car brands. Um, the Czech Republic has Skoda, which is owned by Volkswagen. It's actually been around for a very long time, since 1895, and has recently become pretty popular um, ever since they were bought up by Volkswagen. There's Sa, which is Spanish, and they're also owned by Volkswagen, and then there's Dacia, which is owned by Renault. And these cars are actually very popular. Skodas are the best-selling car in the Czech Republic, Croatia, Slovakia, Slovenia, and Switzerland. Uh, and Dacias are the best selling in Hungary, Lithuania, and Romania. Now I'm going to talk about Chinese cars, and Chinese cars have a bit of an interesting history. Um, currently, some of the major companies include Chengang Automobile, FAW Group, Dongfeng Motor Corporation, and SAIC Motor, as well as Geely. So, China actually has the biggest automotive industry in the world right now. It's have it's had massive growth in the last uh, decade because a lot more people are able to afford cars now. And a lot of Chinese car companies are actually fairly new because of this. So that's led to the problem of Chinese ma manufacturers making what are known as copy cars. So they'll take uh, designs from other manufacturers and copy them and sell them in their own country. So as you can see with the uh, Range Rover becoming a Landwind or this Mini Cooper um, being copied. And they're able to get away with this because um, there's basically non-existent copyright laws in, Ch in China. The government doesn't um, enforce them. But even so... Uh, foreign cars, especially European cars, are still very popular. A lot of car manufacturers have began creating cars specifically for the Chinese market. And the most popular car in China is still the Volkswagen. So it shows that Chinese manufacturers still have a little bit to go before they can make uh, very good cars. Uh, thank you for listening. That is it for my presentation. I hope you all have a good night. Thank you.